Hi guys, um, in this video I'll show you the, uh, how to create a simple crude application in E2 uh, using E2 framework. So once you've uh, successfully installed um, your E2 project, yeah, ensure that uh, you have already configured your DB, so your database, so that it can access the database where the data is stored. Um, now it's time to learn something different. So for this uh, tutorial, I want us to set up a very simple uh, application where it's basically a simple blog. So for the simple blog, uh, we will need, um, let me check first that we have the right database, decode lab, okay. So I just add a simple class, I mean simple database table that is called a blog. So the blog will have a ID. The ID will be auto increased. And then auto increment. And then we have the title. And then we have the content. And then we have uh, created at. I need to add more columns. That. Okay, now, so for the title, uh, I want it to be a string of maximum length 255. For content, I want it to be text. So created at and uh, updated at, I want it to be simply an uh, integer so, so that we store the date time as integers. Okay, so for this part, ensure that the ID is the primary index. Sorry. Okay, okay, okay. Good, so I think our table is ready. And I can just click save. So there we go. As you can see, there is no um, content at the moment. So I'll go back to our application and um, go straight to our code generator that is a GII. Now, the first thing we want to do is that we want to generate a model, in this case, blog. So if you don't see blog here or if you don't see your database table right here, it means there is an issue accessing your database. So you better check your database connection. So blog, standardized caps, let me synchronize that. So the namespace is the app models, which is okay. The base class is this, the EDB active record. And, and then in case you have other relations and uh, junctions, you can just uh, leave this uh, by default. Um, preview, so it will generate one single class. There we go, so it has generated models uh, blog um, model class. So when you go to our models, you can see we have um, a new class um, blog and then these are the rules, these are the attributes. Attributes are basically, these ones have been auto-generated based on our I mean column names. So this is title, content, created at, updated at. So for these rules are basically validation rules when you are creating or uh, when you're creating new blog new blog items so for this case i'll just remove for example these two these ones will be auto i want them to be auto generated so when you are creating a blog we basically need to provide a title and content um e2 will do the rest of the magic now how does it do that it does that by uh, there is something called timestamp behavior. Uh, you can just do a quick Google E2 timestamp. So timestamp behavior manages how um, generates times the timestamps for you uh, when you are creating and updating a new. Uh, I mean, when you are updating or creating blog items. So. This one needs to be configured in the behavior. 
you can see um, by default it it fills the created and updated at attributes with the current timestamp so if you are uh, table columns are different you can now configure them right here okay so for my case uh, i've used the default values so i'll just go ahead and uh, add the behavior then import this class okay so you have a class imported so again if you have used different naming for the created art and updated art uh, just check on this documentation and see you need to provide the created at attribute and updated at attribute as per your database good so at this point we are okay uh, now we need to go and generate another item which is crude so for crude first thing is that we need to provide the model class so the model class in our case is app um, models and then block now e2 requires that you provide a search model so what we normally we just add a search um, so this is the name of the search model class to be generated um, then the next aspect is the controller so for the controller is app controllers so we want our controller to be called block controller good so for view path by default it will it will go to the views and then uh, controller id so for example it will be views blog so if you feel you want to generate them in a different folder you need to specify it here but for this video i'll just leave it empty then the rest of them there's no need to change you can just use them by default okay so um, as you can see we will generate a couple of um, um sorry couple of uh, files uh, the block controller search form uh, so these ones are view files and then we have the model we have the controllers so i'll just click generate and it to generate all these files so when you go back to our app in the controllers we should see the block controller then for the models it has generated a new file called blog search and then for the views you can see there is a new folder for blog with five like five files the form search up to view so when you try to now access now we need to access the the controller uh, the controller in this case is blog so you can see we have an empty table so we can create our first um, blog but as you would remember a created art and updated art are automatically generated so we can just say this is a test blog then content is test blog test blog test blog okay i'll just leave these ones empty so you can see these two have been auto generated and there we go we have our first blog so when you check this you should be able to see that we have um, our first item in the i mean in the grid view so um can add another item uh test blog two again leave that empty so instead of leaving them empty you can actually just remove the form fields so there we go so we have our two items now uh, if you want to delete you can just for example if you want to update let's update first test blog two test blog two and then just save it uh, okay so this one has we have updated the title and as you can see uh, if you want to delete it simply click this so you can see year two framework has generated the boiler code for us so there's nothing much that you need to do unless now you want to start modifying and uh, making your application 
robust because in most cases the crude application might be might not be suitable for your case but you can use it to kickstart your project uh, or to give you a general concept on uh, when creating um, new uh, functionalities within your application so um, guys that's pretty much about it uh, in the next video we will see how we can make these things maybe look a little bit better and um, yeah remember to share your feedback follow the channel um, so that um, you are notified when we have new content for you see you in the next video